Ring Magazine, I love you. I'm a fan. But my pound for pound ratings are better than yours. The boxing schedule has been crazy over the past few months, and many top fighters have fought. So Ring Magazine and other boxing publications, they've updated their pound for pound rankings accordingly, but I feel that they've jumped the gun when it comes to certain fighters and certain rankings. So what I want to do is show you Ring Magazine's current pound for pound top 10, and then show you mine and give you reasons why I differ in opinion with some of their choices. So here's Ring's picks for the pound for pound list. Number one, of course, they have Floyd Mayweather Jr. Nobody can deny that, especially with his recent win over Pacquiao. He's clearly the number one guy. But number two, they have Roman Gonzalez, the, the flyweight champ. And he's coming right off his uh, big victory over Edgar Sosa. I get it, it looked very impressive, but we gotta be honest about who Edgar Sosa is at this point in his career. I think he's faded, he's not the guy he was several years back. So while this was a great win for Roman Gonzalez, to put him at number two above Vladimir Klitschko, I think is very disrespectful to the heavyweight champ. Roman Gonzalez, his recent work does not usurp 10 years of work from Vladimir Klitschko. I think those two should be swapped. Number four, Gennady Golovkin. I'm a huge Triple G fan. I think he's the most exciting, entertaining fighter in the sport, but he simply hasn't fought an elite level opponent yet. Putting him at number four is just too high in my opinion. You can't be in the top five pound for pound if you haven't faced an elite opponent. Number five, they have Guillermo Rigondeau. I'm cool with that ranking. Although Rigondeau hasn't fought yet this year, he has that big win over Donaire a while ago. A huge amateur pedigree. The guy is clearly a top pound for pound talent. Number six, they have Manny Pacquiao. I don't hate that choice, but I think Manny it could probably be further down this list. Carl Frotch at number seven. Carl is one of those guys that has been willing to fight anybody. He was the road warrior for a while, and I've always liked him. He's always made for good fights, and he's been unafraid to face anybody, but he's one of those guys, for me, that's a borderline pound for pounder. He's not an elite level athlete, and I don't agree with them putting him at number seven, especially when you consider the fact that Carl Frotch hasn't fought in a year now. At number eight, Sergey Kovalev. Look, Sergey should be much higher on this list. How they put Karl Frotch above Sergey Kovalev, considering what they've done over the past 12 months, I think that's disrespectful to the crusher. That rating is too low for him. Terrence Crawford, here's another guy that I think could be higher up the list. You know, he not only had the big win over Gamboa last year, he was the fighter of the year, but he's moved up in weight recently and looked really, really good at 140. Look, when you're a smaller guy, you got to move up in weight and look good as you move up in weight. That's how smaller guys get on pound for pound list. And I just think Crawford should rate higher here. Number 10, the Japanese bantamweight Yamanaka. He's a fine fighter, but again, he's one of these guys that I think is a borderline pound for pounder. I don't quite think he's done enough to be on the pound for pound list at this point. So there's Ring Magazine's pound for pound list. Now, I want to bring up my picks and do a side-by-side -side comparison against rings and explain why. So here we go. Number one, Floyd Mayweather. We both agree on that. Good to go. Number two, I have Vladimir Klitschko here. Look, to me, there are three all-time greats in this recent era. It's, it's Pacquiao, it's Mayweather, and it's Vladimir Klitschko. These three fighters are not only first ballot Hall of Famers, they are the all-time greats of this generation. And right now, unlike Pacquiao, Floyd and Vlad are still pretty much at the top of their game and running things in their division. So that's a clear number one and number two for me. Number three, here's where I'll put Roman Gonzalez. Gonzalez had the big win over Sosa, but before that, he's had wins over other top fighters He's also moved up in weight, and as I mentioned before, if you're a little guy, you gotta move up in weight and look good doing it. That's how you get on pound for pound list. I'm cool with putting Gonzalez at number three. Number four, Guillermo Rigondeau. Look, Rigondeau needs to get more active. He needs to get another top opponent pretty soon or he's gonna drop down on my list. 
But as for now, I think he's still clearly a top pound for pound talent. Number five, this is where I put Sergey Kovalev. I think that ring has him ranked too low. Sergey has clearly fought the best opposition at light heavyweight. Adana Stevenson ducked Bernard Hopkins and John Pascal. Kovalev not only fought them, but he beat the hell out of them. He made Hopkins fight scared for 12 rounds, and he not only hurt Pascal, but he stopped him. Nobody's ever done that. Kovalev is clearly a top five pound for pounder right now. Number six, this is where I put Terrence Crawford. Again, he was the fighter of the year last year, the big win over Gamboa, who was a pound for pound type of talent. He just moved up in weight and looked good doing it. Now they're talking about him down the line getting a fight with Pacquiao. He wants those bigger names. I think he should be at number six. Number seven, this is where I put Triple G. Yes, he has not fought an elite level opponent. Yes, he's been fighting B-level opponents, but he's been crushing them, he's been dominating them, and he's been doing it often. This guy fights three or four times a year. That is enough for him to be on the pound for pound list. Number eight, this is where I put Manny Pacquiao. And I have to say, at this time next year, I don't believe Manny's gonna be on the pound for pound list. Pacquiao is gonna be out of action for the rest of 2015 with that injured shoulder and his recovery. He'll come back early next year. He's probably not gonna face a top name. If he does in that fight, he could lose. And that would be two losses in a row for him. Number nine, this is where I put Carl Frotch. I know Frotch hasn't fought in a year, but he's negotiating currently with Team Golovkin. If that fight comes off, then at least he's got something on the schedule. I'm comfortable keeping Frotch at number nine. If the Golovkin fight does not come off and they can't negotiate something, then Frotch is gonna fall off my list because it's been a year. And look, if you haven't been in the ring for a year, you don't even have anything set up, you go off the list. Now here's where I'm gonna piss everybody off. My number 10 spot, I left vacant. I know, I can hear you screaming right now. You're not supposed to have a vacancy in your pound for pound list, but I'm breaking the rules. Sue me. The reason why I have number 10 vacant is because right now there's a clear, obvious changing of the guard happening in boxing. And there's a few guys vying for that big pound for pound elite level spot, right? We don't know who it's gonna be yet. It could be the winner of Sean Porter versus Adrian Broner. It could even be the winner of Timothy Bradley and, and, and Jesse Vargas, right? If Vargas looks good beating Bradley, maybe he goes up there. If, if Bradley looks good, maybe he gets back on the pound for pound list. It could be somebody like Kel Brook. It could be somebody like Keith Thurman. It could be the Japanese kid at 115 pounds that uh, everyone wants Roman Gonzalez to fight. There's several guys battling for that spot right now. You see some of these older fighters fading out, like Miguel Cotto, Frotch, some of these other guys, they're on the fence. Within a year or so, they're gonna be retired. New guys are coming in. So that's why right now I leave things vacant. By the end of this year, I believe the pound for pound list will be much more clear, much more solidified. But let me know what you guys think. Comment below, what are your pound for pound list? What is your criteria for a pound for pound list? Because I know this is something that people argue about all the time. I have kind of a, a mixture of criteria. For me, it's not just who you fight, it's how often you fight, it's how you look when you fight, it's uh, who you fought recently, it's also your overall body of work. It's a bunch of things for me. For smaller fighters, it's they gotta move up in weight and fight in different divisions. These are the type of things that I kind of just weight all of it together and make a decision. But some people have very specific criteria. Let me know what yours is, comment below, and uh, thanks for watching.